Welcome to the Service MVP Podcast, and my name is Joe Crisera, and today we are featuring uh, two of my very best friends and uh, colleagues that I have known for years, and we have uh, Helmley Benfla and Joe Rivera from Guaranteed Services. Welcome uh, to our show, guys. Welcome, Helmley, and welcome, Joe. Thank you, Joe, for having us. It's a pleasure to be with the America's Coach. Thank you so much, Joe. We love you. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you know, is we have a long history that goes back uh, quite a few years. Uh, you know, I first met Helmy when he was the uh, service director over at the uh, uh, company that Mike Aguilero used to own at Gold uh, Gold Medal, right? And that was the name of the company. Yeah, and I was I was the general manager there. Yeah, he was the general manager over there, and he was always. Uh, helping to teach our program back there. And it was definitely an honor. I first met him. I knew I had a friend for life. Uh, help me, why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about the background, about uh, how you got started doing this kind of a thing and uh, and how you wound up where you're at right now. Yeah, well, uh, you're right. It's It's been almost 20 years, Joe. The first time we met was in 2005. Right? I was oh. a general manager of a company. We used doing doing less than a million dollars a year. And uh, Kept in contact till 2018 with you, and we finished up that year with over 33 million dollars. And uh, we decided in 2018 that I decided to go in my own and part of zero technicians, zero calls, zero employees. My first call was to my friend Joe Crisera to for help. Uh, fast forward five years later, we finished up this year with uh, 17 million dollars and. Uh, Going for twenty five next year. Uh, twenty five million dollars. So we're trying to go in twenty five million dollars in six years. Is that we're at, that's the pace we're looking at here. Yeah, hundred percent. There is no doubt. Hundred percent. I always tell people the goal is three hundred fifty five million dollars a year by December thirty first, twenty twenty nine. One million a day. One million a day, baby. Well, you know what? Um, uh, you probably have the guy to your right over there, right? Who's uh, the, literally the right hand man. It'd be hard to do it without him, wouldn't it? Uh, Joe, uh, tell me what's this? What's this? What's this ride been like for you? Oh, it's been amazing. You know, um, not only having you as a great coach, but Helmy has been my, you know, life coach. Um, and we believe in you know being a window and on a door, and you know believing in the process and uh, giving people all possibilities. So it's just been, let's, it's been let's a great go, ride. Let's, let's go over that, Joe. Let's say, so today we're going to cover the three things that are responsible for uh, growing a service business. Make sense? So how, how do you grow a service business from a startup? Uh, a lot of people who grow a business or people who've been in business for 100 years haven't made it to even 17 million, much less have a growth pattern from there. So tell us the three keys to growing a business. Start with you, Joe, since you're the guy on the ground uh, doing the gr grinding it out more. I'm not saying Helmy doesn't do the work too, but I know that you're doing more of the grind out there every day. Uh, Joe, could you tell us like what's the first key? Do you think to growing a service business, if you don't mind? Um, first key to growing a service business is to care about the customer. Um, I believe uh, the first thing is you know if you don't care and you don't fully love the customer and want to see uh, the right thing being done for them, then nothing else is going to be executed right. So that would be the number one thing. Well, you know, Joe, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people say care for the customer, but they have a different version of that. Like you you probably met people who came in to your company and said, yeah, I care for the customer by saving them money or something like that. Uh, how would you define caring for the customer? Because a lot of people think, well, just try to do the job as cheap as possible. That's how you care for the customer. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about what your version of uh, caring for the customer. If, how would you define that uh, a little more clearly, if you don't mind? My version for caring for the customer is uh, permanent solutions, um, something that they don't have to worry about for the next 10 years or the next 12 years, um, not just putting a Band-Aid on it and having to call companies or your company um, and spending money every single year on today's repairs, future repairs, and not really getting anything for it, but, but more grief. So um, we want to see our customers be customers for life and just you know know that they're in good hands and let the worry be on us. Yeah, I mean, you got to do good good enough service so that if you're going to make 17 or 25 million, I see behind you got that window that goes right out to your street that, that you don't want to have. You don't want to have a you don't have a customer at that window knocking on the window <laughs> saying uh, saying he's not happy. Right. How So how important is it that not only do we have to have 
that revenue, but also make sure that the customer got value. What do you think about that, Joe? Tell me about that. Um, it's super important. You know, it's super important that the customer gets everything that they paid for, all the benefits, all the value. And, you know, what that does is creates a good, um, it, it creates a good, uh, relationship, um, uh, because that customer will be a customer with you for a long time and be able to refer you to friends, family, neighbors. Um, if they don't feel that, then it, that's not going to happen. We're, we're in a relationship and a connecting business. That's what we're looking to do. Right. Well, you know, one thing I noticed about all the people that are helping me is all the guys that guaranteed services that I've met, uh, they really believe in the brand in a way. Does that make sense? Like, like there's uh, cause here I always have a saying, I said, sales begins with the person who's offering something. They have to believe in it. Does that make sense? Help me. How many, how, how do you build that kind of a culture where everybody believes in what, guaranteed services is doing could you comment on that a little bit and thank you joe it's great 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 comments i appreciate that we don't cheat we don't steal we don't lie that's number one we always say the truth no matter what the truth is we that's the only way we do it and we always say you know you know to do business in any job or to do any job three wins has to happen customer has to win the employee has to win and the company has to win Right. So when they see the value of, of that, that's, we're not just, we're not, we're not a home run here, right? We, we, we love our people. We love our customers and they believe in it. They really truly believe in it. And our culture here is fantastic. Everybody is having fun. And, and in the end of the day, everybody wins. Yeah. I, I think when you're, you always notice that teams that are winning, have a lot more fun. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's hard. It's hard to have fun when you're not winning. Does that make sense, guys? It is absolutely fun to work here. Honestly, it is fun to work here. We have vacations together. We celebrate stuff together. We I mean, rent houseboats and yeah, houseboats. Uh, we go out to the Poconos and the, the hills together. You know, we just. We, we try to have a really good time at what we do. And I think that's what relates to the whole world also. They know that if, you know, the technicians are having a good time, the company's having a good time and making sure it's done right, then it's just going to create a great product. Yeah. And you can check, check Google reviews to thousands of five star reviews. That's awesome. That's why well, I think that's, that speaks volumes, you know, and I think just, just, I think from what I see, that's the best advertisement is a happy employee who is uh, who believes in the company and believes in the value the customer gets, right? That they, now, now, what's what would you say number two? I think you mentioned before something about the process. How many you want to give us a little bit of thoughts on that about the about having a process and how important that is? Could you share that with us? Absolutely, hundred percent. It's like having a a, a playbook in, in a football team. You need to know what are you doing. Right? You need to know in advance. You don't make it. You don't make it as you go. So we, we, we have a process for everything. I mean, when we say for everything, for everything, including the cleaning lady has a process. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you just follow it and makes the, makes the things very, very simple. We have scripts to say when we answer the phone. We have scripts to say when we go to people's houses. We have process how to handle paperwork here in the office. Uh, and you, in order to succeed, you have to have a process. First of all, you have to have the love of your guys that are working here, right? You know, you know, to say, uh, what if you earn my heart, if you earn their hearts, they give you their hands. All right. Mm-hmm. right? So that's the philosophy we, we work with. And then we have a process how to do things. Like we, we, when we bring in a, a new employee, we just show them the playbook. We call it the playbook. When you show on the playbook, he knows exactly what to do. He knows how to follow the the and training stuff, how to follow service MVP coaching, how where to go. Uh, I mean, really, for every single move, there is a process, there is a playbook for. Well, you know, I bet that I'll bet. I mean, Joe probably could speak to this. He's the guy who's training the process. He does, he's like the main trainer over there. The he's, they, he's the implementation guy. He is. He's the guy who he's the guy who makes it happen, right? He's the guy who um, makes it happen. It, you know, you, you kind of create the play. We kind of create the playbook, and Joe's like, okay, let me take that playbook and let's execute that play, playbook. Um, Joe, what's it like uh, when you show people this the game, the playbook, 
there's got to be some times where it, it's kind of a defining moment, right? Uh, some of some people are like, wow, this is the best. You guys got this all mapped out. This is amazing. It's so much better. And there's other people who are like, uh, oh, my God, what are you doing? Babysitting me or what? <laughs> like, you ever had that, Joe? You can notice that, like, like instantly whether this is going to be a good fit or not. Even it all, it all looked good until you show them the process. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, Joe. What's that like? Uh, for for most of the employees, I probably would suppose it's good because they wouldn't get to that point unless they were. Tell us a little bit about that, Joe. So for most of the employees, it's a sigh of relief um, because when you have it mapped out and when you have an accurate game plan, you could execute that game plan. You know, it takes the worry away. You know, the technician is coming in, their company, company they want to know that, you know, the plays work and all they have to do is stick to the process. Um, when there is no process and, you know, uh, you're kind of, you know, brainstorming as you go, that that never makes for anything good. So well, you know, I, I would say more just a sigh of relief. Definitely. They know that we got it figured out. All they have to do is our process and they're going to win. Yeah. When you have the right person, when you got the right person, it is like, oh, thank God I'm home. I found the place where I, I feel like I'm home here. Right. Uh, it's very interesting. But by, by the way, I for, did forget to mention everybody here that this company, Guaranteed Service, is in New Jersey, which if anybody doesn't, if anybody doesn't know this, like if I had to pick probably the worst place to start a business, it'd probably be New Jersey. <laughs> The most the most challenging environment I could possibly have would be right there in New Jersey. I mean, uh, although although it doesn't seem to stop you, I still I still see those all the employees are smiling and you guys are having a great day all the time. It seems like I've never seen uh, any any doubt any doubt that you guys were going to be successful. What what's it like? What, what do you how would you respond to people who say you know you can't do well with the government and the city and the states and all that kind? Because of, there's a lot of it's difficult to operate a business like even just the traffic in New Jersey is is, a, no, is no tough. Doubt. To do. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that, guys. It, it's just the white noise, man. They, you know, no, is it, you just need you don't need to hear it. You don't need to concentrate on it. You need to focus it. What what's going to move the needle? That will never move the needle. That will put you backwards. We like, focus on what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Just focus on the things you can focus on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go over the third the third element. So getting the right process. How about implementing it? Tell me about that. And what's that? Uh, uh, how does that take place? So, I mean, to talk to people say, well, how do you get your guy? How do you get your guys to do all this stuff? That's one of the hardest things to get people to do. You got these strong minded guys from New Jersey who think they're pretty smart. The, the wise guys from New Jersey. Right. Uh, you got the, the heart, the heart of Tony Soprano and everybody over there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you guys get these guys to do do what you want them to do instead of doing what they doing what they want to do? Go ahead, there, Joe. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell First us about of all, that. they have to believe in it. Have to really believe deep in the inside. They have to believe it, right? And then you get the guys that they don't believe in it the first time, the second time, the third time, fourth time, and you just keep going. You just keep going. Don't give up, right? And you just keep going. And then then at one point they believe in it, and then they will say, "Wow." You know, I told you, Joe, years and years ago, you changed my life, all right? And then the first time I remember, I sat down watching the, you know, in the total immersion system, and I'm like, why am I here? Right? And then after a couple of weeks, I could not wait to just join that training session, right? Mm. And, and and honestly, it really, really, you changed my life, right? And and I'm grateful for it as well. But you have to believe in it. You really have to believe in, in the process. Once you believe in the process, it becomes natural to you. It, mm -hmm. it becomes really natural. Uh, and, 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 and it makes the implementation very easier, a lot easier when you are excited to come into the train. Right? Then it makes it like, I mean, we got guys, Joe, they show up like 30 minutes before the training and, and they, they coaching each other, right? Mm -hmm. and they, before Tanya jumps in, right? They already like coaching and they're doing role playing with each other. They believe in it. They love it. You know, implement. I think is really strong word. Just following it, and they're doing it willingly, and because they believe in it. I took uh, total immersion in 2013, so everything that we've taught here has been at the core total immersion, and mm -hmm. um, they believed in it since then. So when we rolled out the new total immersion, the advanced cores, um, they couldn't wait to get to it. They couldn't yeah. wait. It was the new, it was the updated version. It was 2.0 and, um, they couldn't wait. 
you know, I couldn't. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Joe. Since 2005, I never hired somebody that did not go through your training system. Zero. Wow. Every every single person it went through your training system since 2005. We never had anybody in the road with that. 60 videos, 67 videos. Uh -huh. Yeah, over uh, three days, cram it. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> and the old school, but service MVP now is is a lot different. Well, good. I, I hope. Well, tell me about. Just tell me this: when you, when you're growing a company like you guys are growing, and you start to see new results, because as you're growing, like you, you know, se before 17 million, it was less, and now it's 17 million, and now it's going to be more. Uh, as you're growing like that, tell us about uh, some of the greatest. Uh, challenges first that you go through uh that you, people can expect to go through as they're growing and what are some of the uh, greatest victories let's start with the greatest challenges and then we'll go on to the victories and you, either one of you can respond to that what, what are some of the greatest challenges so that you're originally gonna run when you originally the when you yeah the biggest challenge when we started is uh you know you're, you're new in the business you know and you obviously want to hire the best of the best and the best of the best they always think of are you going to keep me busy you just started all right. So the, the, the biggest challenge was uh, uh, attract talent people. Right. And then, and then once the first person, second, third, and then, and, and the team grows. All right. And, and they start the team that start bringing other team, team members to, to, to the game. So we, we, we honestly, we almost, we don't have any hiring ads. Right. Yeah. They, they, most of the new hires that come in from the guys that work with us, they bring them in because, like you said, you mean you saw them. everybody's smiling, everybody having. Uh, that was the biggest challenge for me, uh, is bringing very good talent of people when you are new to the business because people they don't believe in in you in you yet. Would you say? Would you say that you're looking at? Um talent that you have to build help me in this regard as you're growing the company or is it talent that's already finished product when you get them they, you they, no talent that we have to we 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 grow from from the inside right we we really we we teach from the inside we have our process we have our training we you know i, I would like to have somebody that really doesn't have any training you know you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to teach an old trick. But it's better with a blank slate. Yeah, sometimes. But you need to have the talent of of that good personality. It looks good. Uh, you know, top good, clean person. All right, that's the challenges is to you know that we, you know, we went through. And, and going back to what I said earlier is finding somebody that cares. You know, mm -hmm. listen, we could teach everything, but I can't teach care. You know, either, either you, you know, genuinely love people or you don't, you know, mm. and it's very, it's very hard to teach that. So yeah. that, that's what we look for. I've seen a lot of plumbers who are like, Hey, my job is just to do plumbing. I don't, I'm not here to talk to people. I'm just, mm -hmm. so you really have to care for people and care about the process you're following, right? Does that make sense, guys? We're servants first. Let's end on a good note though. What are some of the, what, what, what do you guys high five or you fist bump? On a on a weekly basis, tell us what are some of those highlights that make you guys smile and laugh and have a great time. What are the some of the things that uh, that, that happen that on a weekly basis that people can expect from the good part of it, not just the challenge there? We we just had a meeting like what, an hour ago. Our our January of twenty twenty three compared to January of this year, we're up by thirty nine percent. <laughs> uh, those the ones that give us high fives to everybody, and then we we'll look around and we and we survey all of the employees. We got like what four point eight out of five of oh. employees. You know, happy to so We we that's what makes us really good feel good. You know, numbers up, morale up, all right, and and people that love to come to work, and that's what we really celebrate in the end of the day. Yeah, I think so many times people focus on financial growth, but what I'm hearing from you guys, really the whole theme of this call has been focus on the personal growth of your people. Does that make sense? Joe, what do you think about else, Everything else, you know, it follows, right? You know, if you have a great morale and you're doing good by the customer and you're having a good time doing it and make sure you do strong work, the money follows. You turn around and you say, oh, wow, we did that much. Great. You know, that's the fist bump, right? You know, it's it's the reward. 
Hmm. Well, you know, they always say a good podcast starts on time, but a great one ends on time. I'm not sure if it's going to make it a great one. I think we're going a little bit over time, but I just wanted to say thanks to both of you for coming on today. What final words of encouragement would you give to the service nation that's out there uh, about people who are seeking to grow their business? Does anybody want to go ahead and just chime in or Joe, either both of you can do it? Tell me, what do you think? What, yeah, what, what are your final words? Seek yourselves, love your people, or learn their hearts. They give you their hands and they work for you forever to create a process to the business. Every single step has to have a process. Create a great implementation and follow with training, 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 all the time. Never stop training. You always stop. You always do training and hold people accountable. They hold me to have their payroll check in the end of the week, right? Right, right. That's good, <laughs> right. Good. Is, is that important? Is that important that they can? Because you allow people to hold you accountable too, right? Help me. That's what I. That's what I've everybody, seen so far. Everybody held me accountable. You know, it starts by the top accountability. There you go. And then, yeah. So when you train someone and you you give them the process, you implement the process, make sure he knows how to do it. You train them. You have to hold them accountable too. If you don't have a process, you don't have implementation, and you don't have training. There is no accountability and there is no success. Hmm. Joe, what do you think? Any final thoughts here? I would say, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, practice, practice, practice. Um, you know, we're blessed to be able to, you know, go out on five, six, seven calls a day sometimes and uh, be with a lot of different types of homeowners and personalities. So um, the more you practice, uh, the more you stay in the game, uh, the better you get. But it definitely doesn't happen overnight. It takes a little bit of time. But when it gets there and it clicks, you're a, you're a beast. Well, one thing I can tell you is my, my life improved a thousand percent the day I met both of you. Thank you for being here on the show. I really appreciate both of you guys. And they thanks. for. I, I thought I was going to meet just clients, but I wound up having two of my best, very best friends. So thank you so much, guys. Thank appreciate you, Joe. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck to you.